this video, we're going to look at problem number 14 on the free ATIT's math practice test that I have posted over at www.bcraftmath.com. Number 14, this is one of those challenging problems on the free practice test. Jose wins big on a scratch off ticket. After paying 25% in taxes and paying off his car loan of $23,000, he has $22,000 left. What was the grand prize of the scratch off before taxes were applied? and before Jose paid off his car loan. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The first one's going to be uh, a shortcut method, but it's going to be a, maybe a little bit harder to understand, and then I'll come back and show you a proportion technique as well. So let's kind of work backwards through this. We know he pays 25% in taxes, he paid off his car loan of $23,000, and he has $22,000 left after doing all of this. So therefore, we're trying to figure out how much money he won before all of this stuff was applied, before the taxes, before the car loan. Well, he has $22,000 left, and if he paid off the car loan prior to that, he had $22,000 plus $23,000. That's a total of $45,000. Now, this is how much Jose had after he paid 25% in taxes, because he paid off his car loan of $23,000 and he had $22,000 left. So we take the $22,000 plus the $23,000, that gives us $45,000 that he had after paying 25% in taxes. So if he paid 25% in taxes, this means this $45,000 right here is actually 75% of what he won. Think about that. Paying 25% in taxes leaves you with the remaining 75% of the prize money. Now let's think about this visually in this circle here. In this circle, I have divided it up into four sections, which means each section represents 25% or a fourth of the circle. If you take a pizza and you cut it into four equal slices, each slice is 25% of the original size of the pizza. Now, if we take this 45,000 and we break it up into three pieces, because we said this $45,000 is 75% of what he won because he had to pay 25% in taxes. So I'm taking 45,000 and I'm breaking it up into three pieces because these three pieces represent 75%. If we take 45,000 and divide it by three, we get 15,000 in each one of these. So if I were to put 15,000 in this one, that's gonna be four equal portions of money. This is a total of $60,000, which is the final answer to our question, but I wanna talk about this a little bit more just in case it's a little bit weird to wrap your head around. Let's take this and let's check our work. Now this is actually a very good strategy to do with a multiple choice test. Suppose this was one of your answer choices. Let's just work through the problem. Suppose Jose, okay, you won $60,000. You gotta pay 25% in taxes. A quick way to find a percentage of a number is to take that percent, 25% is 0.25, of what Jose won. So he won $60,000. I'm taking 25% of 60,000. I'm multiplying those two numbers, and that's $15,000. Well, he had to pay this in taxes. Therefore, we need to subtract 60,000 minus 15,000 in taxes. So we just subtracted off 25% of his winnings, which leaves him with $45,000. Hopefully these numbers are looking familiar. Now, what else did he do? He paid off his car loan, right? Well, if he paid off the car loan, we're gonna subtract that from the 45,000. And notice how much money Jose has left, $22,000. So we're checking our work based off of that. And the weird thing here is understanding that if we take the money he had left, we added back the money he paid on his car loan, that's $45,000 that represents 75%. So you want to divide this up into three equal pieces representing 25% each because we know this missing 25% piece, once you can find that, you can add up all these equal pieces to get the total amount of money he won. Now, instead of us doing a proportion, actually I know I did mention back at the beginning we were gonna do a proportion, let's look at an equation instead. We know he had $22,000 left plus the 23,000 that he paid off on his car, so this was that 45, plus 25% of his winnings went to taxes. A way we can do that is 25% of his winnings X. That's what we don't know. But if we take the money he had left, we add back on what he paid his car off with, plus a 25% tax, that's going to be 
the total amount of money he won. So you may say, well, where is this X coming from? Where is this X coming from? This represents 25% of his winnings. Adding that on to these other values will be equal to his total winnings. So we want to solve this equation for X and we should get $60,000. So I'm combining like terms here, 22,000 plus 23,000 is the 45,000 plus 25% of his winnings equals his total winnings. Let's move the 0.25x over here by subtracting it from both sides. That's going to cancel out these 0.25x's over here. Let's bring down our $45,000. And then over here on the right hand side, this is an understood 1x. His total winnings minus 25% of his winnings represents 75% of his winnings. There's that 75% again. And then lastly here, to get X by itself, we can divide by 0.75 on both sides. That's going to cancel out our 0.75s on the right hand side. 45,000 divided by 0.75. Check it out, we get X equals 60,000. So yes, we got the same answer taking an equation approach versus more of a visual and uh, more critical thinking involved here. Uh, thinking about the the 100% and breaking it up into 25% portions. Now, if you had this question on the T's test, the T's test is multiple choice. You could take your answer choices and kind of work back through the problem. Like I did when I checked my work earlier, I took 25% of 60,000. That was $15,000 he had to pay in taxes. We subtracted that off since he had to pay it. Then we subtracted off to $23,000 since he had to pay off his car loan. And once we subtracted those two values, he was left with $22,000. That's a good approach on the T's test, whereas these two techniques I'm showing you here would be helpful if you did not have a multiple choice question. And there you have it, problem number 14 on the free ATIT's math practice test, and that's it for this video. I hope it helped.